and welcome to the first session of the bloater so uh, i think every one of you might have gone through this kind of bluetooth symbol so everyone knows what is a bluetooth but you are not alone if you are wondering what exactly bluetooth is and why you should care about it so uh, bluetooth is actually always on short range radio hookup that resides on a microchip it was initially developed by swedish mobile phone maker ericsson in 1994 as a way to let laptop computers make a call over a mobile phone since then several thousand companies have signed on to bluetooth the low power short range wireless standard for a wide range of devices the industry observers expect bluetooth to be installed in billions of devices by 2005 so this is actually a report from some business week of 2000 so now it's 2017 so this might have gone two times or three times up the bluetooth standards are published by an industry con uh, consortium known as bluetooth sig so sig is nothing but actually a special interest group of the bluetooth the concept behind bluetooth is to provide a universal short range wireless capability and this is actually an ieee standard of ieee standard of 802.15.1 this is not uh, this bluetooth and this ieee is actually both are same so what is this bluetooth bluetooth is a unique name and this is a standard of ieee 802.15.1 so uh, let's move forward using the band of 2.4 gigahertz this bluetooth is available globally for unlicensed low power users two bluetooth devices within the 10 meter of each other can share up to 720 kbps of capacity bluetooth is intended to support an open-ended list of application including data such as schedule telephone numbers audio graphics and even video for example audio devices can include headset uh, cordless and standard phones home stereos and digital mp3 player following us some of the examples which will make you clear that what bluetooth consumer can do uh, they can make a call from wireless headset connect it remotely to a cell phone eliminate cables linking to computer to printer keyboard and the mouse uh, hook up mp3 player wirelessly to other machines to download a music set up home networks so that a couch potato can remotely monitor air conditioning the oven and children internet surfing and many stuff so call home from a remote location to turn the application on and off set an alarm and monitor activity so these are the some of the things which you can actually do with a bluetooth so we'll actually move on to the next part of the bluetooth so what is this bluetooth is so bluetooth applications so the first application of the bluetooth is actually a connectivity so what is this bluetooth bluetooth is designed to operate in an environment of a main user up to eight devices up to eight devices you can communicate in a small network called as piconet so till now what you have utilized uh, bluetooth it was just end-to-end -end application so if you want to transfer some file to your friend so you will call him up and you will tell him that just turn on bluetooth i'll send you a file and blah 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 stuff so now you have made it clear that you can connect up to eight devices it's actually a piconet so 10 of these piconets can coexist in a same coverage range of the bluetooth radio to provide a security each link is encoded and protected against eavesdropping and interface so what is this interference and eavesdropping all this stuff so this is actually a some part of your bluetooth so bluetooth is actually utilizing some thing uh, some spread technique called as fhss you might have heard it frequency hopping spread spectrum so what is this fhss so fhss uh, in general to tell you FHSS is nothing but it's uh, some kind of modulation which is utilized in 2.4 gigahertz in your Bluetooth just to make sure that your data does not get caught up by someone. So how is it possible? So I think 79 channels are there in Bluetooth. In that 79 channels, if your signal is hopping 25,000 times per second in a random manner, in a PN sequence manner, so you can assume that how 
difficult it is to predict that uh, in which manner the signal is hopping so you might have got the idea of 25,000 hops per second in 79 channels so let's move forward so Bluetooth provides a support for three general application areas using short-range wireless connectivity so data and voice access point Bluetooth uh, facilitates the real-time voice and data transmission by providing effortless wireless connectivity of a portable and stationary communication devices so the one of the best example so we have covered connectivity so we have covered data and voice access points so let's move on with the cable replacement so how cable replacement the bluetooth eliminates need to numerous and often proprietary cable attachment for the connectivity of practically any kind of communication devices so communication are instant and are maintained even when devices are not within the line of sight the range of radio is approximately 10 meter but can be extended up to 100 meter with an optional amplifier so you can imagine that if you expand your bluetooth range to some 100 meters so it's quite good enough to control your devices and whatever stuff you wanted to control so so the next point is something called as ad hoc networking so ad hoc is nothing but a temporary network so what is this ad hoc networking a device equipped with a bluetooth radio can establish instant connection to other bluetooth radio as soon as it comes into a range so i think this is enough for the basic application so next uh, bluetooth standard documentation so what is this bluetooth standard documentation it actually represents the formidable bulk well over 1500 pages divided into two groups namely the core one and the profile one so what is this core and profile so core specification describes the details of the various layers of the bluetooth protocol architecture from the radio interface to link control related topics are also covered such as interoperability with related technologies testing requirements and definition of various bluetooth timers and their associated values so uh, this is all about this core and what about then profile so what is the profile the profile specifications are concerned with the use of bluetooth technology to support various applications each profile specification discusses the use of technology defined in the core specification to implement a particular usage model the profile specification includes the description of which aspect of the core specifications are mandatory optionals not applicable and all this stuff the purpose of a profile specification is to define a standard of interoperability so that products from different vendors can claim to support a given usage model will work together in general terms profile specification fall into one of the two category first one cable replacement or wireless audio the cable replacement profile provides a convenient means for logically connecting device in proximity to one another and for exchanging a data for example uh, one two devices for uh for example when two devices first come within the range of one another they can automatically query each other for a common profile this might then cause an end user of a device to be alerted or cause some automatic data exchange to take place the wireless audio profiles are concerned with establishing short range voice connection so the bluetooth developer must wait through the many documents with a particular application in mind the reading list begins with the coverage of some essential core specification plus general access profile this profile is one of the number of profiles that serves a foundation for other profiles that don't specify the independently usable functionality uh, the general access profile specifies how bluetooth basement architecture defined in one core specification is to be used between the devices that implement one or the multiple profiles following basic set of documents the reading list splits along the two lines depending on whether the reader is interested in cable replacement or in wireless audio so uh, this depends upon the user functionality so uh, we'll move on to the next thing
so what next so next is a important parameter of the bluetooth so it is nothing but how bluetooth is constructed so obviously in the terms of construction obviously there has to be a protocol architecture so in protocol architecture you observe this protocol stack or this one so both can work but i think this kind of application you might have seen it in some computer communication based subject where you have studied some application layer presentation layer so it's nothing but actually relevant to the osi model so what is this osi model so open system interconnection you might have heard it so we'll go through it so what is this protocol architecture so bluetooth is defined as a layered protocol architecture consisting of a cope protocols cable replacement telephonic control protocols and adopted protocols the core protocols from the five layer stacking consist of following elements so which five layer so this actually this is actually your one layer this is actually your second layer this is actually your third layer and this is your fourth layer so where is fifth one so this actually this bluetooth is a combination of the multiple layers so this is actually considered to be an application first then these three layers are session transport network so i think four are completed so next data link and physical layer so what is this confusion about a layer so this actually works on only a file layer so core protocols from file layer stack consisting of following elements so which are these following elements so we are not looking into this thing this is just for in reference so then don't get mixed up with the layers defined in protocol architecture this osi model this osi model and this bluetooth stack so this is for just understanding of osi model and this one is for the bluetooth so let's begin with the radio the first layer of the bluetooth so you know why bottom layer always is selected first so what is radio or uh, there is written as a rf so radio specifies the details of the air interface including frequency the use of frequency hopping and modulation scheme and transmit power so this is how the rf is dealt with the bluetooth <coughs> sorry next the baseband the baseband is uh, actually concerned with the connection establishment with a pico net addressing packet format timing and power control so this is your second layer called as baseband and then third one is actually your link management protocol so what is this link management protocol is it is responsible for the link setup between the bluetooth devices and ongoing link management this includes the security aspects such as authentication encryption plus control and negotiation of the baseband packet sizes so this three layers actually means much more to you so let's move to the next important layer called as l2 cap so what is this l2 cap means so it is actually a logical link control and adaptation protocol i'll repeat it is actually a logical link control and adaptation protocol so that's why it is called as l2 cap so it adapts the upper layer protocols to baseband layer l2 cap provides a both connection less and connection oriented services so next one is your sdp sdp is actually a service discovery protocol uh, which is situated over here so sdp is actually a device information services and characteristic of the services can be queried to enable the establishment of a connection between two or more bluetooth devices so uh, what is this rfcom so rfcom is nothing but it is a replacement to cable protocol including the bluetooth specification rfcom presents a virtual serial port that is designed to make a replacement of a cable technologies as a transport as a uh, i'm sorry not transport as a transparent as possible the serial ports are one of the most common type of communication interfaces used with computing and communication devices hence rfcom enables the replacement of the serial port cables with a minimum modification of the existing devices so rfcom provides a binary data 
transport and emulates EIA-232 control signals over the Bluetooth baseband layer. EIA-232 is actually a formerly known as uh, your RS-232. It is widely used serial port interface standard. So whenever you uh, you might have heard about a serial communication so it always comes into a RS-232 it's actually same but name is different called as EIA-232 so whether you call it as RS-232 or EIA-232 the work remains same it's actually a serial interface so Bluetooth specifies a telephony control protocol it's actually a TCS bin so in the middle of this layer there is something called as TCS so it's not actually Tata Consultancy Services it's actually a telephony control specification okay and this uh, bin is nothing but telephony control specification binary so is a bit oriented protocol that defines a call control signaling for the establishment of the speech and data calls between the Bluetooth devices in addition it defines a mobility management procedure for handling group of Bluetooth TCS of, uh, devices. Then uh, adopted protocols are actually defined as a specifications issued by another standard making organization and incorporated in overall Bluetooth architecture. The Bluetooth strategy is to invent only necessary protocols and use existing standard whenever possible. These are the adopted protocols. So i think this one you can see is actually one of the protocol called as ppp so or triple p it's actually a point to point protocol it is an internet standard protocol for transporting ip datagrams over the point to point link then next one is tcp ip udp all this stuff so uh, you might have heard something called as tcp ip udp these are actually a foundations protocol for the tcp ip protocol suit then next one is something called as obex so obex is actually your object exchange protocol in the session level protocol developed by a uh, infrared data association or uh, you can call it as irda irda so for exchange of object obex provides a functionality similar to that of the http hypertext transfer protocol but in a simpler function or uh, in a simpler fashion it actually it's not http it's actually a lower version in a simpler fashion of the http so obex is lower version you can call it as of http but uh, it also provides a model for representing objects and operations example of the content formats transferred by obex are v card v calendar which provides a format of an electronic business card and personal calendar entries and scheduling the information respectively so uh, there is something much uh, more information about the obex so just don't make http and obex as a similar but you can call it as somewhat functionality of http and obex are similar uh, then wae and what this called as wap is actually a wireless application protocol or wireless application environment bluetooth incorporates the wireless application environment and the wireless application protocol into its architecture so uh, the this is all about your protocol architecture of the Bluetooth so I don't think so there is any difference between this architecture and this architecture so actually speaking this both are same but just I have introduced a OSI model here there is no such OSI model shown in this diagram so actually if you rip uh, this one or this one doesn't matter so this is a protocol architecture of and bluetooth so i think we should move to next slide so what is next so next one is your usage model so uh, what is this usage model uh, so usage model is nothing but a uh, actual sorry a uh, number of usage model are defined in bluetooth profile document in a sense a uh, usage model is a set of protocol that implement a particular Bluetooth based application each profile defines a protocols and protocol features supporting a particular usage model following are the some of the highest priority usage models something like uh, file transfer internet bridge LAN access synchronization 3-in-1 phone and headset so we'll go through it one by one so first one is your file transfer 
So what is this file transfer? The file transfer usage model supports the transfer of directories, files, documents, images, and streaming media formats. This usage model also includes the capability to browse folders on a remote device. So this is all about the file transfer. Then internet bridge. So what is the internet bridge? With this usage model, PC is wirelessly connected to a mobile phone or a cordless modem to provide a dial-up networking and fax capability. For a dial-up networking, AT commands are used to control a mobile phone or modem. Uh, you might have heard something called a GSM modem. So GSM modem, uh, they employ uh, something called as AT commands, so which is same to the this thing. AT commands are used to control a mobile phone or modem and another protocol stack such as PPP over RFCOM is used for data transfer. For example, for fax transfer, the fax software operates directly over RFCOM. So this kind of thing can be used and utilized under the file usage model called as internet breach. So next one, uh, actually a LAN access. So what is this LAN access? This usage model actually enables uh, devices on a PicoNet to access a LAN. Once connected, a device functionality as if it, uh, as if it were directly connected, uh, just like your wires to the LAN. So there is no much difference between your wired LAN and if you operate your Bluetooth using that usage model for utilization of LAN access. So this is a much more bigger usage model or the functionality which you can utilize. The next one is a synchronization. So synchronization is nothing but actually synchronous operation. So what what actually this synchronization does means. So this model provides a device to device synchronization of PIM. So what is this PIM? PIM is actually personal information management such as phone book, calendar, message and note information. So IRMSC. So IRMC, IR is not, uh, IR mobile communication. It's actually a, one of the IRDA protocol that provides a client server capability for transferring update PIM information on one device to another. So next, uh, three in one phone. So what is this three in one phone? So it's actually a telephone handset that implements this usage model may act as a cordless phone connecting to a voice base station as an intercom device for connecting to other telephones and as a cellular phone the next and the last one is headset so what is this headset headset can act as a remotely device audio input and outward interface i think uh, out of this all features you might have gone through some of the features so this is in a smaller format that what kind of usage model are utilized in Bluetooth. So I think we should move, move on to the next topic called as Piconet and Scatternet in Bluetooth. So what is this Piconet and Scatternet? As mentioned earlier, the basic unit of the networking in Bluetooth is a Piconet consisting of a master and slave. Uh, it can be a master and slave from one of the seventh active slave devices so anyone can be a slave anyone can be a master in one network so here you can see this m signifies a master s signifies a slave but that is one important point that slave in one network can be a master in another network so let's see what is this master and slave and piconet and scatter so from one state uh, for uh, for example the radio are designated as a master to make a determination of the channel or frequency of hopping sequence and phase timing offset uh, that is actually when it transmit that will also be used by all devices on this piconet the radio designation as master makes this determination using its own device address as a parameter while slave devices must tune to the same channel and phase a slave may only communicate with a master and may only communicate when granted permission by a master a device in a one piconet may also exist as a part of another piconet as i have already told you so it may function as either slave or master in uh, in each piconet so what is this each piconet so i think it's actually clear one piconet is nothing but one small network 
in which there is one master and seven slaves uh, here there are only four but it can extend up to seven so seven slaves and one master which is actually a one of the slave but he is acting as a master of that particular network so this is actually a ad hoc network that is nothing but a particularly uh, this is called as pico net the small network uh, in which there is one master and seven number of slaves so if these two networks get connected to each other this is called as a scatter net so what is a scatter net scatter net is nothing but you are connecting more number of small networks into a bigger number so what is this actually a mean by master slave and scatter net so you might have got some idea that one small network is nothing but a pico net and combination of this two pico net can act as a scatter net so uh, let's move on to the next topic it's something uh, let's talk about the advantage the advantage of the pico net and scatter net scheme is that it allows many devices to share a same physical area and make efficient use of the bandwidth a bluetooth system uses a frequency hopping scheme with a carrier spacing of 1 megahertz typically up to 80 different frequencies uh, actually it's specifically speaking it's 79 so the total bandwidth of your bluetooth is 80 megahertz so if frequency hopping isn't used single channel would correspond to a single 1 megahertz band with frequency hopping a logical channel is defined by a frequency hopping sequence at any given time the bandwidth available is 1 megahertz with a maximum of 8 devices sharing a bandwidth different logical channels uh, different hopping sequence can simultaneously share same 80 megahertz bandwidth collision will occur when devices in say uh, sorry not same when devices in different piconets on different logical channels happen to use the same hop frequency at the same time as the number of piconets in area increases the number of collision increases and performance degraded so in the summary the physical area and the total bandwidth are shared by scatternet and the logical channel and data transfer are shared by piconet so uh, here in the second diagram the red one shows the master then slaves are shown by green color and this p is nothing but a parking so nothing but if bluetooth is not active in a network or it is in a power saving mode it's called as parked so a pico net is a type of connection that is formed between a two or more bluetooth enabled devices such as modern cell phones and pdas bluetooth enables devices are peer units in that they are able to access uh, either like a uh, or it can act like a master or slave however when piconet is formed between two or more devices one device takes the role of master and all other devices assume a slave role for synchronization reason so piconets have a seven member address space three bit with zeros reserved for the broadcast which limits maximum size of piconet to eight devices that is one master and seven slave so scatternet is number of interconnected piconets that supports the communication between more than eight devices scatternet can form when a member of one piconet either master or one of the slave elects to participate as a slave in second separate piconet uh, the device participating in both piconet can rely the data between members of both ad hoc networks however the basic bluetooth protocol does not support this relying the host software of each device would need to manage it using this approach it is possible to join together numerous piconets into one large scatter net and to expand the physical size of the network beyond the bluetooth limited range currently there are very few actual implementation of scatter net due to limitation of bluetooth and the mac address protocol however there is growing body of research being conducted with the goal of development algorithms to efficiently form a scatter nets so this is all about your bluetooth so this bluetooth uh, this architecture you might have seen this is actually a cellular system square represents the stationary base stations so why this is hexagon and all this stuff you already know so this was your cellular system or gsm system and this one is your ad hoc system where the small sections 
represent the piconet and this kind of system represent a scatter net so i think this is quite enough for the introduction of the bluetooth so let's get into the revision of the bluetooth so what do you have studied so in i would like to begin with the first thing so first we have gone through what is this ieee standard of the bluetooth and all this stuff then bluetooth applications then your core and profiler document then next your protocol architecture then next usage model and next and last is your piconet and scatter so this all sum ups to a bluetooth but there is much to learn about this bluetooth so uh, we will do this in the next class so be prepared with the whatever stuff we have covered up today so thank you and let's meet in the next session of the bluetooth thank you